What I'd like to do is just kind of frame it out for you, and then we can start asking questions along the way. Okay. Just to start the process out, we, we looked through George and, and Cheryl and Mike's departments, and we basically <coughs> asked them to take a look and see what is it that we need to do, uh, and what would we like to do, and how can we maintain the quality of the community that we all would like to have. And in today's economic conditions, what we tried to do this time is to hold the line on, on the increase in the assessment process except for the phase-in on the equalization project. Okay? And I'll show you how this will work uh, on, in, in a few minutes. And so we looked at staffing levels, and, and staffing levels and compensation and benefits are make up about 45 or 46 percent of the total expenditures. So if you nail down that particular part of the budget, you basically got half of the budget process challenged. Some key statistics, uh, and I'm sure some of you uh, are, are familiar with these, and, and I know George and, and Mike are in terms of kind of the scope of their services that they, that they have to uh, maintain and, and manage. All of the expenses of the community association, including the joint cost. Um, joint cost, for definition, is that area around the enrichment center, the fitness center, and Rosie's that is available for use for the community, all the community, Lighthouse Bay, Copper Leaf, Spring Run, and Shadow. So when we talk about the, the, the joint cost, we're talking about this assessment line, and this is only the revenue that is paid for by those other communities not just Shadow and Community Association. Our share is, I'll show you in another slide, is about $39,000. So then we also have another line here called shared cost, and that is a portion of our activities that the country club pays for uh, on a shared arrangement. Similar to the joint cost, but it is just that piece that the country club occupies. You're all familiar with interest income, Miscellaneous income uh, is basically uh, legal fees and uh, late fees and things of that nature. And the reason they're down from this year of 2009 to 2010 is that we're going to be doing a couple different things with collection policy this year. We've got uh, an educational process going to go out here shortly about how the bill is to be paid, when it's to be paid, and we're also instituting an ACH debit program. Similar to how you pay your utility bills with FPL or Embark or anybody else, you designate the date and it'll automatically come out of your checking account. And we think that'll help slow down any late fee calculations that happen or any interest in. Previous board meeting, we talked about how we're going to handle chargebacks to the communities. In the past, what would happen is the association would pay for it all, and then they would get paid for by the residents. Now what's going to happen is that's just going to be in an in and out on a receivable basis. It's not going to hit the income statement. When George has to do something for one of our communities, the non-HOA communities, it's going to sit in a receivable account until it gets billed to those residents. When those residents pay it, the receivable will get eliminated, it never hits the income statement. And so that's the reason why this is dropped by 20000 Let me get to the calculation of how we calculate the, the assessment that actually each one of us will get here in about another month. First and foremost, we start out with obviously the top number, the three million figure. From that we have to subtract the revenue that we're going to get from Top Relief, Spring Run, Lighthouse Bay, the Bonita Bay Group, for joint cost. Then we subtract from that also the other little miscellaneous revenue that I just went through. Interest income and miscellaneous. Okay? So now we have to have a billing 
that comes out to 2,807, 2,808. And how we arrived at that is as follows. We start out because we start from the bottom, but I'll, I'll, I'll do the top, and then we'll work ourselves down so that you can, you can follow this out. Let's look at 09 for just a quick second because it will set the tone, if you will, for 10. Last year we needed 2,827, and in that number was 50% of the non-HOA capital piece. Okay? So for those who live in the non-HOA community, you paid a piece of this 26,000. For those of you living in an HOA community, you paid none of that. Right? Then we get down to the 2,801, and then here is Shadowwood's portion of the joint cost for last year. Right? So on a pure basis, the pure basis is 2,770. And you don't reflect anything related to joint cost or the capital for non-HOA communities. Looking at 2010, you know we have this phase in and we're in the second year now in 2010. So the 25% phase in jumped to 50. Next year it'll go, in 11 it'll go to 75 and then in 2012 it'll be 100%. So in 2010, this 26 doubles to 52, and then this is our share of the new joint cost for 2010, and the real net number ends up being 2768, which is within striking range of last year. Let's, <laughs> let's look at expenses for next year, and I will comment upon uh, some of the major changes between them. In this area of, of compensation and benefits, uh, this area is basically the same number of employees as we had in 09. It's 36 employees. Uh, the reason for the $82,000 change uh, rests in a couple uh, areas. First and foremost, wages. There's a budgeted wage increase of 2%. There is FICA taxes increased according to that schedule also. But the big changes come in health insurance. Uh, three months ago when we were told that uh, our health insurance premiums were going to go up by 30% if we kept the same benefit plan, uh, the decision was made to change the benefit plan, to increase the deductibles and pass on some of that cost to the employees. But we still end up having about a 12% increase, even with the benefit plan change. But in addition to that, we've had an increase in enrollment. Despite the fact that we've had 36 employees and they're not, they're the same employees, we've had three more employees join the plan for a variety of reasons. Primarily Spouse changes, their, their spouse no longer has a job, or their spouse elected to have the employee of Shadowy Community Association be the primary. But well, we've got $27,000 worth of increased health insurance for those employees. So the overall increase in health insurance is about $39,000 over 2009. Now one of the things we're going to do in 2010 is we're going to take an overall look and step back and look at this whole benefit plan for the employees and probably we'll end up redesigning it from the ground up rather than just changing the benefit plan. Um, we currently share an 80-20 relationship for the employee. Association pays 80%, employee pays 20. That is pretty much normal for the community around us. but. Given where we're at, I think it's maybe time that we have to re-examine that split. Uh, what, there's a family involved or a dependent involved. It's a 60-40 split. The association pays 60, the employee pays 40. Um, so we're going to look at the whole picture in 2010, and that's one of Cheryl's objectives for, for next year. 